time is it, y'all? What time is it? It's peanut butter jelly time. Movie peanut review time. time. Movie peanut review time. time. Where are you at? Where are you at? Because we got some fun things to talk about today. Peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. <laughs> so, last night, I got to screen the new Spider-Man Far From Home. And as many of you, of you all know, Spider-Man is my number one favorite all time, most loved, close to my heart, if you get the point by now, favorite superhero. He's my favorite. I think because I love the lightheartedness of the superhero in him, the comedy, he's young at heart. He is young, right? He is young. But even his stories and his comics and, and his movies have always had that lighthearted, young feeling to it. And let me begin by saying Spider-Man Far From Home is right on line with that feeling of, of the lightheartedness in the superhero uh, Spider-Man movies. Spider-Man movies, it will not disappoint. If you love Spider-Man movies, you will love this. Especially considering this movie takes place eight months after the reemergence of everyone after the big snap, right? <clears throat> Which is kind of a, a tense situation. We know uh, Thanos snapped, half the population was gone. Half the population was gone. Then they had, you know, the Avengers came to save the day. You know, it was, a lot of lives were sacrificed. A lot of Avenger lives were sacrificed to change everything, such as Iron Man, you know, Black Widow. And they talk about it a little bit about it um, at the beginning of this movie. Um, but, but everyone came back and then uh, this is so this is eight months after the reappearance, which they don't call it the snap. They call it the blip, right? They call it the blip because half the population was here. They were still here aging and everything. And then the blip happened and half of them came back. So they go into that at the beginning, explain a little bit about that, um, explain how life has carried on since then, eight months later. But in a way, I mean, this is, you know, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, he's a teenager. <laughs> so this is the teenager version of, you know, what happens after this. And he's a teenager superhero that lost his mentor, right? Iron Man sacrificed himself to save half the world or all the world, right? The whole world, because Thanos was gonna eliminate all the population then. So he sacrificed himself and, and Iron Man was Peter Parker's mentor and he lost his mentor when this happened. So he's, he's you know, getting over that, moving on with life for that. He also has this thing, uh, you know, he wants to, you know, he has, he's a super, superhero, but he also wants to be a teenage boy. You know, he likes girls, he likes MJ. You know, so he's he's struggling with, yeah, I'm a superhero and have these super responsibilities, but I'm also a teenage boy and I want to enjoy life. And and he goes on this trip to Europe, this trip with his school to Europe, and he wants to, like, leave, he wants to go live his life as a teenage boy, enjoy this trip to Europe, and not have to think about being a superhero. He wouldn't even leave his superhero suit at home, which Aunt May wasn't having it. Aunt May wasn't having it. She's making sure he packs the superhero. He's even ghosting. He's even ghosting Nick Fury. <laughs> Nick Fury's trying to get a hold of him before he goes, while he goes. And he's ghosting Nick Fury. But Nick Fury ain't having that neither. Because he tracks him down. And you see in the trailers how he darts his friend up in the neck and everything. So it's, it's a lot of like in this movie, you know, P, about Peter's struggle with with you know wanting to be a teenager and wanting to live his own life and the superhero life so that's what a lot of this movie is i'm gonna tell you number one the acting in this movie is phenomenal i have always said that my favorite superhero my favorite spider-man was played by toby mcguire i've always said that i was always team toby even after watching Spider-Man Homecoming and Tom Holland in that. But after this one, after watching Far From Home, Tom Holland is my new favorite Spider-Man. 
he has grown into this role. He has taken this role and he he is perfect in it. He he has perfected Spider-Man in this movie. Everything about it. I loved it. So I am now Team Tom for Spider-Man. I'm sorry, Toby. Sorry, Toby. I'm now Team Tom, Tom in this. Also, uh, I have to shout out for the acting. Jake Gyllenhaal. He plays Mysterio, which... As you know from the comics, Mysterio is a villain in the comics, right? So he plays Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio. And I'm going to have to admit, Mysterio is kind of a lame villain in the comics, right? His whole thing is about, you know, illusions and the smoke and mirrors and that kind of stuff. And, and he has a fishbowl helmet. I mean, even his suit is kind of cheesy in the comics. So when I first saw that they have Mysterio in this, I'm like... I wasn't feeling, I was like, why? I was like, why? Mysterio, he doesn't really have superhero or any kind of powers, you know? He, he's kind of, in, in his whole thing, smoke and mirrors. He don't even have that cool, like, gadgets to fight and things like that. And he's not even tough. He's kind of, so I was not happy about that. I was not happy about that. Um, but, and and it could have made it could have made far from home you know having mysterio in this could have made could have ruined the movie it could have ruined it for for me for other fans but jake gyllenhaal great in it great so much that i think i mean it could have having mysterio it could have went boom it could have crashed and burned i feel like jake gyllenhaal saved it i feel like jake gyllenhaal Save this movie as Mysterio. So the acting in this, phenomenal. Tom Holland, hello. Jake Gyllenhaal, great. Of course, you got Nick Fury, awesome. Happy is in a lot of this. Um, John Favre, <laughs> John Favre. Now, unpopular opinion. Some of y'all might get bad, but unpopular opinion. I never was feeling that Zendaya as, as MJ. I've never, I've never, she just never, I mean, yeah, the look, I mean, MJ has red hair and this and that. I mean, that's not a big deal, the look. But just uh, even her in that role, I never felt it. I never felt it. Zendaya's like, you know, kind of in this, like a moody teenager that kind of don't like nothing. And she's kind of like, yeah, mm, mm. That, it's not MJ for me, <laughs> you know, that's not MJ for me. So, I'm not a fan of her in this movie and as as that character. I mean, I like her. I like Zendaya. She's in uh, the new HBO show, Euphoria. Excellent. Perfect in that role. But as MJ in the Spider-Man, I'm just, I'm like, uh, it's not for me. It's not for me. So that's, that was my little take on the acting. Um, like I said before, I loved the movie. I loved this movie. I loved it. Not only my little bias because I'm the number one Spider-Man fan, <laughs> but I thought it was a perfect Spider-Man movie. I thought they did it perfect with taking the seriousness of the situation that they're in, you know, the losses that they had, um, how the world is just crazy now with half coming back and the age difference and all that, but also bringing in the Spider-Man humor, the Spider-Man lightheartedness. Loved it. Loved it. I think, I think, you know, of course, in credit scenes, got to stay for the in credit scenes. There's two of them. There's a mid and there's an uh, end and in credit scene. Both great. Both will leave you jaw dropped. Jaw dropped. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so both of those will leave you in and draw dropped. And this movie, I feel like is the perfect segue from the phase two, MCU phase two into phase three. Perfect subway. I think they did it great. Um, so yeah, if I would have to give it a rating, I would say it gets 4.5 out of five. I have to knock it down because I still, I'm still not a huge fan of, you know, the villains in this. I was unimpressed. I feel like some of, like for a younger crowd, they can kind of get lost with the fight scenes 
or not be that as interested in the fight scenes because of the villain in this. Um, but I was I was unimpressed with the villains. I, I but that's the thing. The end, I I feel like some of the villains in the, in Marvel in general aren't the best. I mean, if you compare the Marvel villains to the DC villains, DC is going to win and villain wise every day. I mean, yeah, you have like some great ones like Thanos and stuff, but some of these I'm just like, uh, eh. eh. But like I said, it didn't matter this movie. And let me tell you this, even having the villains that they did, it was needed. These villains, this villains were needed in the this plot. The villains was needed in this plot for certain things, you know, for um at the beginning it tell like they kind of tell you Peter, I mean, at the very beginning, Peter kind of loses his spidey sense. So he kind of loses his spidey sense. Aunt May throws this banana at him. He's like, oh, and she's like, what happened? You know, they have they have even a word that she calls it. Not spidey sense, but it's another word that will have you cracking up. The jokes in this, hello, <laughs> the jokes. They have, you know, Tony moves on, you know, Tony is, you know, past, but the world moves on and Tony kind of, you know, love Spider-Man. He always, he was his mentor and stuff. So he like left some things to him and he left one of his controls called Edith. And, and even with that stands, uh, pay attention what Edith stands for. Cause even that would have you like rolling. So not disappoint, do not disappoint. I loved it. I'm going to go see this again and again and again, and you need to see it <laughs> again and again and again, because it was perfect. It was perfect. So yeah, 4.5 out of 5 ratings. And uh, yeah, go see it. Go see it. It comes out July 2nd. You will love it. Till next time, y'all.